How's it going guys? My name is Alex. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. And today we'll be talking about the cameras and which camera angle you should pick and including a new brand new dual camera this season in eFootball on mobile devices and I'll be talking about covering all of the cameras. The first one is uh, mid-range and it's kind of mid, not gonna lie. Of course, it's very good to perform different techniques like shielding, uh, skill moves. You barely see your players on the pitch, uh, like you obviously need the radar for that. And I'm showing you this on iPad and uh, because I have to crop it, I'll be showing you it uh, with the black bars on the side so you understand the perspective that I'm playing with. And of course, you can understand uh, now when I'm cropping it in a little bit uh, so that you can see it's 16 by 9 ratio as well. So uh, it is a little bit awkward to play it like that. I usually only use this type of camera angle when I need to perform a skill move tutorial. It's very risky to play it in online scenarios because you're gonna be crushed by people playing long balls or uh, through balls behind your defense and then switching to the player that you need is gonna be very difficult and it's really hard to cover the players that you barely see on the screen. Next one is a long. Long is a little bit better than mid and GL, TBH, SMH uh, but uh, definitely uh, this is not the camera that I'll be using in online games as well because like you obviously see more of the screen uh, you can perform skill moves still and uh, that's actually useful uh, to see what you're doing with your players the animations are better and uh, you can see the faces of the players in a way as well uh, it'll be a little bit different on mobile devices uh, like which are 60 by 9 ratio mine is a little bit different ratio but still um, ratio plus L, so it, it doesn't matter. It works fine for me, but long is not the camera that I'm gonna be choosing. So um, this is still uh, better than mid. I mean, that's that's for sure. Better than mid, but I barely see the players in front of me. I don't know where to pass to. And if my opponent is, uh, like, this is a training, of course, but if my opponent is allowing me to make a progress like that with some skill moves, maybe some fake shots, uh, I'll be doing that, of course. But if not, I'll be covered. All the space will be covered. I, I desperately need to see players in front of me to perform a through ball, and uh, this camera is barely allowing me to do that. Another one, white. And I, for some reason, I don't know why I picked this camera at the start of the season. I was playing pretty much the entire... Uh, like week, the first week after the release, and then I discovered, of course, another camera, which I'll be covering in a second, but uh, this was a very decent camera until the point where I discovered that I have uh, problems establishing uh, where my defenders, where my center backs are, in a position where my opponent is about to play a long ball behind my defenders. And because it is essential, especially on during the kickoff, as you can see, this camera is allowing you still to perform skill moves. You can see the players, you understand the perspective where you need to perform the skill move. The timing is uh, also uh, good and you can curl uh, if you want to. And the problem with this camera is that I barely see my defenders and I need to rely on radar. And sometimes you don't have it on that split second to take a glance at the radar and understand what's going on with your center backs. And in the kickoff scenario, you would want to dra drag your defenders as close to your goalkeeper as possible, just to prevent that long ball in behind your defense and be able to, uh, to tackle that. And uh, this camera is not, unfortunately, not allowing that, as uh, I'm still... Uh, this ca camera, however, it is like literally the first camera so far that is allowing us to play long balls. So I can, bear I of course, can see and I can switch the flanks. And uh, the next one is Dynamic White, and this is by far has been the best camera last season, and it still probably arguably remains the best camera this season. I can perform through balls like that, I can find the spaces, I can curl the ball, I can still understand the perspective uh, where I need to perform the skill move. A little bit more difficult, of course. The easiest way to do that is, of course, on mid, but uh, it's mid, so why would you even play that? And uh, this one is Dynamic White. It's very useful because even when you're starting the game, for instance, you are uh, during the kickoff. Uh, the, I only noticed that during Dynamic White, I, I might be wrong though, it's a little bit very cinematic, like a nice cinematic panning in uh, before the kickoff, and you see more of the pitch at the start of the game. Switching to a defender. And can I run with him? Yes, I can. And I run with the defender into the goal already so that the long balls are not working. And uh, you are able to drag your center back if you want to. And you're dragging your center back into a position where uh, you can prevent the long balls. And this is a glitch, uh, very extremely effective mechanic even this season. So you need to tackle it and prevent it from happening. And uh, this is arguably the best camera, like this is not the, maybe not the best, one of the best, but uh, I'll be covering the one uh, that can be introduced a newly camera a little bit later and that is very exciting for me too. So um, this is useful because you see 
uh, where your players are and whenever you need to score a goal uh, okay, can, we can't even score the goal against training match but let's intercept the ball look every single time and of course by the way let's talk about the uh, long balls in behind your defenders now you see where you're actually passing so you can't be accused of being a long ball spammer like if you see the opening of a player you pass the ball to him and then you create your attack this way and now let's talk about the weird cameras the cameras that you probably will not going to be using and uh, after watching my video you'll understand why this one is a live broadcast so imagine you are uh, watching a football game and uh, there's only one camera it is a static camera like it only can pan to right or to left and uh, maybe zoom in a little bit but still it doesn't help your cause because you are um you're essentially on your own there so uh you need to figure out like the the, the movement of like if you're playing with joystick and you're using that you will understand that you need to obviously position the joystick uh, according to the orientation of your player so you can't really position it uh, forward and you'll probably be running forward so if you position it forward he'll be running a little bit diagonally like there with Angel Di Maria there and he lost possession of the ball so this is a little bit frustrating and it's I don't understand any I mean unless you're like you're having an ability to spectate a game this is a very good look at me and, and i can't even understand where i need to run with my defender almost considered a goal there so this is, camera is <laughs> absolute nonsense uh, if you want to play competitively of course and now let's talk about the stadium another fixed camera uh, that is uh, standing in the middle of the park a little bit even wider than the live broadcast and it still can only punt to the right or to the left and uh, that is pretty much it you're limited there and uh, you need to again one more time establish the orientation of your players where you need to run and uh, accordingly you need to play like this was very lucky through a long chipped ball and uh, we are scoring a goal but i am not expecting to score more goals uh, with this type of camera because it's really difficult to um, understand where exactly you need to swipe or like to direct a joystick in order to score a goal so it's it's a little bit frustrating this way but you can of course adjust to this one like it will take some time but the sacrifice i wouldn't say it worth it uh, you see more of the pitch of course it's a little bit more cinematic as well uh, but I wouldn't be sacrificing dynamic wide for any of this. And now let's talk about the newly introduced camera. This is dual camera and I feel like this is a very close to dynamic wide but you still see more of the pitch and the problem uh, with this camera is then when you're playing on that further part of the pitch uh, you don't see uh, magnification like you need uh, you need to see your players a little bit closer from time to time like I understand uh, you get the possession of the ball. This is something they introduced this season on console. It's looking very cool. Like, look, it is panning in. Like, it's it's zooming in a little bit. It's actually very cool. It's helping you a little bit. Helping you to see the players. And let's see if we can intercept the ball over here. Again, on this further side, like from you, like uh, the right back of your opponent, like Pepper there with the ball, I can't truly really understand what I should be doing there. How do I need to tackle? But when I'm there with Messi, it's a little bit zooming in. And this mechanic is awesome. But would I be... I mean, I'm still kind of torn between this one and the dynamic wide. Would I be picking dynamic wide over dual or not? Uh, it's still a question for me. My, I, I can't really tell myself. Um, the dynamic wide is a little bit more predictable. So you don't get this uh, random zooming in. Even though uh, these magnifications is of course are, of course... Um, made uh, a little bit smoother for you to be uh, adjusted for them and they are not really influencing uh, your controls at all so the way the same way you are passing the ball the same way you would be passing it with different cameras so dual a very interesting take on come on Di maria take this ball pick it up and pass it to well, uh, fantastic goal uh, yeah so there you go this is what you need to do yourself maybe if my video is not helping you decide on that go to training and establish which camera you like the most but give it a try for dual i believe by default you're getting either wide or dynamic wide and then you're playing with that by the till the end of uh the um season and you probably don't change it so maybe if you watch my video it will help uh it helped you a little bit and uh again look small smooth zooming in you didn't even notice that but it's looking very cool so i might be actually switching to uh, the duel just for the aesthetic purposes and uh, to ensure that you guys are watching the content on my channel getting really good gameplay alongside with great visuals because this is the camera that they introduced this season it's a new feature just like stunning shots stunning passes so i recommend you guys trying it out All right, so we're hoofing it over the bar. This has been the camera review. And if you enjoyed this one, watch another video over here.